Ferry explosion, um, part of the minutes. Um, when, when is the report coming back to committee after it's been to cabinet? We are just have an update on it because it does cover um, some of the stuff that was given to David Armstrong regarding um, bills and so forth. Have we got any updates on it? So yeah. Scaffolding up in 
social rating could also be used for subsequent repairs. I think the issue is that some people have insurance, some of the buildings will be outside the port, some that it's trust, and some people didn't. And, and I took away the comment that was made that um, our report seemed to indicate there was one outstanding case, and in fact there were more. I'm waiting for David Ball to return to work and, um, um, and I'm going to go through the thing with him and identify which are the issues, because I've got a, I've got a spreadsheet with Clearly, we know our records aren't accurate, <coughs> we need to have them accurate. But I think the issue is more about um, why we get into the different circumstances people find themselves in. So I am hoping that the people who live around that square will see some difference now. There will be some upset in the short term to get the slab up and the foundations up. But hopefully we can make, it, make a difference. The final point is, there's a, there's a section in the report about hoardings. I actually researched hoardings last summer because I thought we could put some hoardings up. Without going onto the sites, we could put them in the pavement, uh, movable ones using drums to hold the posts full of concrete that I've seen. And I was told at the time that the residents didn't want hoardings. Clearly, that's changed. And again, if there are any areas in the future where they do want hoarding off, then we'll try and do that as well. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, David. Um, just to continue that, if you look at the minutes, there's a statement from myself at the end of that report saying.
domestic producers and shoppers, as well as business as traders, and work on this regeneration continues to make a progress. Right. Sorry. What I'm saying is that people no longer shop in Birkenhead, and this Marks and Spencer's has gone, the co-op's gone, Treaties is about to go, so they will go to other places to do a lot of their shopping. And those are the people, you, if, you, if you're going to have a shopping centre there, I don't want you to do that, um, we'll, you'll need to get those people back. And I'm saying this consultation doesn't appear to, to include those people, and it's those people who need to know what they want in terms of shops. Sorry, thank you. Good evening and thank you very much for inviting me to do a brief update on the commercialisation developments led by the commercial management within the council. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Stuart Bowley. I'm currently senior commercial manager. I'm going to be delivering this presentation on behalf of Nicky Butterworth, my boss, 
uh, director of delivery services where commercial management currently resides. I've got a few slides to run through that just give a like an overview of what we've been doing around the commercial developments within the council um, over the last sort of 12 to 18 months. What I'll do is also from the slides I'll reference where the key sections are within the report as well as I take you through. Um, Um, I've shared some, some of you have seen a presentation from me before. We've run a lot of workshops around commercial strategy with the Business Overview and Scrutiny Committee before. Um, and in the past, we've certainly I mean, run members' training. You know, as I'm sure you'll be aware of many of these in terms of drivers around commercial approach. Um, one of those key things has been our council policies and our council plan. We have the 2020 pledges, which obviously is coming towards an end. We've got the new 2025 plan. Um, certainly over the last sort of four to five years, we've had a lot of uh, new operating models within the council. Positive thing for me, I think, was actually a focus within those new structures around income generation for the first time within the council. Um, I don't need to rehearse some of the conversations you may have had around financial pressures that are faced within the council itself. But an important part with all of this in terms of how we develop commercial, the commercial approach has been around building on some of our trade service success, successes across the council as well. Um, there's a lot of good um, operations out there that bring in a lot of income for the council itself. Um, just a reminder that the council agreed uh, a vision back in, or cabinet agreed the vision policies back in June 2016, and then a commercial strategy, which is included in the, in the report later on, was approved by cabinet back in November 2018, following a workshop with this particular committee, and also recommendations from this committee as well. Um, certainly what we've done over the last couple of years is to focus on five main themes and these are referenced within the report itself. Um, what, I'll go into more detail on, on a few of these. Um, in particular, I'll, I'll touch on briefly about growth. That's looking about new commercial ideas going forward. Um, and then the other one, the two others I want to pick up on are around fees and charges. And then the final bit is the box on the right hand side about organisation development and training. So in terms of building internal commercial capability. Um, we've got an internet support site for commercial approach that's been launched, that's been live now for a couple of years, We're looking to refresh that to help and support officers across the council in terms of developing their, their business approaches. We've got uh, e-learning modules have been developed, um, training packages for managers and above. We've, we've run in-house training for all managers. We've had over 60 staff have attended five-day managers course. Uh, I've run cohort four, about to launch cohort five on that, so a lot of managers have gone through that. And on the back of that, we've introduced one day commercial introduction staff for those who want to know a little bit more about commercial, but maybe not be a team manager or team, team leader or manager level. And again, that's been very successful, um, with over 40 staff who attended that, and I've even run a specific one for leisure services itself. Um, very favourably evaluated, I hasten to add as well, those courses. Um, and then the final thing as well is, I think what's been important, I think, for our commercial approach across the council the last sort of two to three years has been developing links across services, particularly those that are, are, are working more business-like, looking to income generate. So one of the things, again, that we built is some network meetings, which run about twice a year, but it's about making connections amongst offices who may not normally make connections on projects they may or not be working on and services they are running about to, to generate income. And again, we've been running those for about two to three years now. And again, those have been quite successful at starting to build those links. And that's directly from officer to officer. Obviously, as a commercial team, we're out there supporting and working with our officers, particularly those in income generating or those who've got new ideas. Okay? Yep, go with all. Thank you. One of the things, go back one, thank you. One of the things we have put in place over the last two to three years has been internal governance around making sure that we are developing our commercial approach. Um, I'm sure it's been mentioned to you before that sitting at the top of that pyramid in terms of internal governance is our investment change board. But to help the investment change board um, sort of work through it, commercial opportunities and ideas, we've got a commercial board that's running. That's chaired by Nikki Butterworth, um, our director of delivery services, um, and that runs on a monthly basis. And that's basically where new ideas and projects are brought to the board. Plus, also we're monitoring the projects that are currently being undertaken to try and ultimately bring in new income to the council. As I mentioned, the commercial strategy was signed off by Cabinet back in November 2018. And one of the things the Council has invested in the last 18 months is actually a small commercial team. We've got, as it references it in the, in the, in the report in section 6.1, um, we've got six new commercial business development officers. Um, three of those are corporate, so they work across the Council. 
Uh, two are based in parks and countryside, and one is based purely in leisure. And it's um, quite impressive to see the amount of ideas and projects either they're coming up with or are helping supporting officers either within their own departments or across the council. Um, it's a big investment. The intention is ultimately they will bring in more income than it's costing the council to employ them. That's, that's the intention with those staff, and they're looking to do that. Okay. One of the things I get challenged quite rightly over the, sort of the last 12 to 18 months, well, that, that's great. You've got all this governance, you've got these offices, you've got these ideas, you've got the projects. But what difference have you actually made in terms of income that's coming to the council? So whilst I'm not playing in certain the top one, um, because that is down to our other departments, but just to let you know that we have brought in an additional £2 million worth of income. That was based on the output from 1819. Um, it's around about £32 million worth of income that the council brings in across a range of different services. Um, I am claiming number two because that's part of the school trade services. We've got, as it says there, three new trade services were launched last year. Um, DPO is the data protection officer. These were offered out to schools. Um, the data protection offer alone, uh, officer alone brought in over £100,000 worth of new business into the council, helping and supporting our schools make sure they meet GDPR compliance. Um, we've also, our legal service have been offering support out there. New this year has been marketing and audit, and again, they've got some interest from schools, and the school and schools are buying back some of those services as well. Um, Tour of Britain, um, that was quite a challenge last year to bring the income in. We did our very best. Um, we managed to bring in 32, 30, I said 32 million, that was, that was very ambitious. We brought in 32,000 pounds worth of income into the council through a mix of sponsorship, um, uh, merchandising and also uh, c uh, c concessions as well on the actual on a couple of days itself. Um, one thing to mention there, whilst we, we did find a challenge, I must admit, trying to get sponsorship on such a short notice period as well, in terms of leading up to the tour series and tour of Britain last year, we were the only council, and it was the first time we'd done this, that got private sector sponsorship in for the tour of Britain. None of the other councils, either whether they tried or not, I don't know, but any of the other seven stages, certainly on the Tour of Britain, there were no private sector sponsors for those individual stages itself. So we had some success there, but admittedly it was limited. Um, street housing, street house naming is just a simple thing, it's something we're doing for free and now we're charging developers for, um, and uh, that, obviously they're happy to pay that. It's something statutorily, we're the only people that do it, but we can actually charge for it. We have been doing that for 20 years, we are now charging for it, the developers are paying it, it's bringing in about £15,000 a year. And then the final one is, um, that's building up our small developments around business to business. We've managed just an example here of to get some extra procurement work with our Merseyside pension funds, you're bringing in about 28 k So those are some of the successes, um, because quite rightly people are challenging, well that's great, you've got all the governance, you've got the staff, you've got the ideas, you've got the projects, but what difference money-wise are you making to the council? So that's what we're about. those are some of the things. Okay. What, going back to the five strands, one of the things I wanted to focus on was around fees and charges. So as I said, we, we bring in about 32 million across our range of different trade services. What we have done is a real focus about fees and charges. And what we've done with that is moved that on from just a conversation, what well, used to be just an email exchange around what's your fee and charge for next year, actually to challenging conversations with our services that all set fees and charges. And one of the things, as I said, we focused on the top 15 income earners of the last three years. We're encouraging benchmarking. We're also moving more towards conversation about income targets rather than what's your fee in charge. Because ultimately, if they can get a greater volume in but reduce the charge, that's still better for the council overall in terms of getting that income in. As I talked about earlier, it's about sharing learning across the services. And then just to finish, so. <clears throat> One of our major challenges, I think, with the commercial team, we support our regeneration asset departments. We're certainly not driving that work there, but where needed, we are supporting them. We're looking at our governance and workflow, particularly about how we can accelerate our identified new commercial ideas. It's taking some time to get those through. We want to look a bit more around social value into our commercial approach, and particularly how can we use it some of our marketing? Um, because, you know, it takes something like leisure services. You know, there are people out there who want to spend their money with the council, and they why aren't we advertising in that way? Come and spend your actual pound with the council rather than a private sector competitor. So we're looking at ways we can build social value into our marketing, not just for leisure, but across the range. And as I mentioned earlier, it's about, it's about developing our B2B business to business. So we're looking particularly with our public sector partners to begin with, but seeing if there's any way we can either work for shared services or even offer our services for trading with our um, public sector partners as well. 
And so, example earlier on was the Merseyside Pension Fund. And that is a quick whistle stop tour, hopefully, giving you a bit of flavour about what was in the actual report itself. <coughs> Separate budgets. I can answer that. Oh, thank I, you. I can answer that. 